Welcome back to Rich Words Music. Now I've been playing guitar for years and years now and it is to my absolute shame that I have to admit to us all here on the YouTube that today is the first day that I've ever had a Proco rap pedal to play. Yep, it's been around for decades, as I have, but I've just never ever found one in my possession before nor ever found the need to really get one because I've always been about transparent overdrives and amp overdrive, that kind of stuff. But I've got one now, I've realized the error of my ways and it has changed how I think about distortion. So this is a video being made now to avoid you guys making the same mistake as me. If you've never tried, played or tested a Proco Rat or one of the many derivatives out there, go do it now. You can thank me later with a sub. Let's get straight into the playing part and then I shall tell you the five reasons I think that these pedals are indispensable to the modern guitar player. I'm going from the guitar, my Epiphone, Les Paul Traditional Pro through humbucking and coil split mode into the Rat which is going straight into my Hughes & Kettner Black Spirit 200 head. I'm using the red box running straight into Logic Pro. That's the setup. Let's play it now and then we'll talk afterwards.
All right then, that was the Proco RET2 then. And if you're anything like I am and have not heard one of these before, you're absolutely floored right now. I could not believe it when I plugged this thing in. Well, first when I got the volume up to kind of unity gain and got it loud enough, I could not believe the sounds that were coming out of this little black box. And now I kind of understand why the list of people who have played this thing is so long and so full of luminaries over the decades since this pedal has been there. Okay then, so these are the five reasons why I believe you definitely need to have a rap pedal in your arsenal and have the possibility to whip one out should you ever need to. The first one would be the sounds. Did you hear this thing? If you go back and look at the clips that I just did, it's, it's thick, it's fat, it's raw and it's dirty and it's just huge. But enough, <laughs> enough about me. The pedal does all those things as well. I could not believe it's the hard clipping in it, I think. You know, as I said in the intro, I've been about transparent overdrives, that kind of stuff. And this is a different way of turning your amp into a filth machine. So this hard clipping was a real night and day thing for me. And as I said, there's so much gain on tap. It's so thick and fat, and I just love those sounds. And the amazing thing about it is that they're not just suited to fat metal things or dirgy, stonery, grungy stuff. They can pretty much do anything by the sounds of this. On the RAT website it says that you can do anything from jazz and folk through to metal and I was very skeptical about imagining trying something like jazz or folk on this. But I did my little indie bits and my classic rock bits and some very lone gain stuff and it worked out incredibly well as well. I mean I'm gonna have to put these up against my transparent overdrive pedals and see how it stacks up against them for those kinds of things but it was really really good for those and of course when we went into the heavier stuff the indie rock stuff the garage rock stuff and even some of the more dirgy metal sort of things i thought it sounded absolutely huge and i hope that you agree the second reason on my list why you absolutely need to try one of these rap pedals is that they're actually really really cheap for what they are i mean this cost me full whack it must have been i think 77 or 78 euros which is you know that's a lot of money for everyday things it's like a weekly food shop or something for a hungry boy like me but um 77 or 78 euros for a dirt pedal these days is really not that much. I mean, this is made in China, but if you look at some of the more expensive, the boutique overdrive pedals that are out there, you can pay three times as much as you would for one of these, for one of those pedals. And the options you get with this, despite it only having three knobs, make it a very, very versatile option. That also makes it perfect as a Christmas present or a birthday present or something like that. It's in the realms of possibility, I would say, for certain parents to say, okay, you can have a rat for your next uh, birthday or Christmas present. And of course, if you do get a rat, that leads me to point three of why you need one, because you will be in super illustrious company. I could not believe when I went online and checked who's been playing these things over the years and found out that some of my absolute favorite and most respected guitarists were on the list. And they were people in genres where I had no idea. So I've just gone through, I'm gonna read you a few of my favorites, my personal ones, and then list a couple more that I've seen on Wikipedia. But it's just, it's way more people than I would expect have been using this. First off would be Justin Hawkins from The Darkness for his lead stuff. I absolutely love The Darkness and everything they've ever Ever done and so to find out that Justin uses one of these for his lead sound that's that's just incredible I had no idea the second one I did know about Alex Turner the frontman from the Arctic Monkeys he used two of these in fact for the band's first album whatever people say that's what I'm not and the tours around that in 2005 2006 he's been photographed with a couple of these on stage so you can see where he got his edgy, let's call it indie rock sound from back in those days. I don't think he uses them anymore, but still they were unique and iconic to that sound back then. Third on the list is James Hetfield. Apparently he used a rat into a modded JCM for the Kill 'Em All sound. If it's good enough for him, I'd say it's more than good enough for me and probably for you as well. Next on the list is Graham Coxon. Of course, the guitarist in Blur, and he has awesome solo records as well. He's been a longtime fan and proponent of the rap pedal and has made it do many disgusting sounds over the years. He's been a guest on That Pedal Show, which of course you'll all know if you've seen my channel. You can watch the episode with him, and they've done a brilliant episode on the rat as well, so go check that out if you want more information on this box and on Graham Coxon's use of the box as well. Next up we have Kurt Cobain frontman from Nirvana. It was not, I don't think, his favorite or most used pedal, 
but when they were doing Nevermind, he went straight into the desk through one of these for Territorial Pissings, which is actually my favourite Nirvana song of all time, and coincidentally my parents' least favourite, so there's a link there somewhere. I had no idea that he used the rap for it, but I just love the way that track descends into madness with Kurt screaming like a raving lunatic and the guitar going into this fizzy mess and I guess we have the rat to thank to that fizzy mess. So there we go. Dave Grohl for the Foo Fighters and of course previously Nirvana was also a massive fan and the rat was also the favourite dirt pedal of Krist Novoselic, the bass player in Nirvana. So all three of the guys in Nirvana were fans of this rat pedal. Next up on the list is another one I did not expect at all, but it's Rivers, Rivers Cuomo from Weezer, another one of my most favoured pop punk bands from back in the day, very influential on me. I had no idea that this pedal was in any way used in their sound whatsoever, but I like them even more now I've found that out. Next up, Nuno Betancourt, a classic. We all know that. He's done a lot with The Rat over the years, and there's a lot online that you can find out about that. James Dean Bradfield from The Manic Street Preachers, Possibly Wales' best band, one of them anyway, at least in the indie rock, the classic rock realm. He has used a rap pedal a lot. Again, I had no idea that he was making use of it for their indie anthems that they produce. I had no idea that you could do that kind of music so well with this pedal. Next up we have Peter Buck from R.E.M. Again, I had no idea that R.E.M. or bands of that ilk were using a rap pedal, but there you go. So that's 10 or 11 or however many it was that I really, really like. And just to go through Wikipedia now, which I've got in front of me as well, some of the other names who are using the rat just kind of beggar belief really. We've got Buckethead is on the list, Jeff Beck is on the list, Matt Bellamy from Muse is on the list, Frank Black from the Pixies is on the list, Jerry Cantrell, Nels Klein from Wilco. Wilco used the rat, I had no idea. You know, uh, Kurt Cobain's on the list, uh, Robert Fripp is on the list as well, Dave Gilmore. I mean, he's a name who should probably have been on my list of the 10 really, but personally I'm not a huge fan of Pink Floyd or that music, but he is an incredibly influential guitar player and I associate him more with Big Muffs, with the Ram's Head Fuzz and that kind of stuff, but as you'll have noticed, once you go up past 12 o'clock on the distortion part of the rat here, it goes very much into first territory, so you can see what he would have got out of it. Just going back down the list then, who else have we got? Uh, we got Thurston Moore, Stephen Malkmus, these alternative rock people who I would never have assumed would use something like this. Sun O, that kind of stuff. Boris, I've no idea who Boris is, but he sounds cool. And Andy Summers, and Joe Walsh. And Tom York from Radiohead, there you go. What more do you need? That was point three of the five, but there you go. All those people have put the rat to amazing use over the years. So yeah, I'm gonna be trying to follow in their footsteps, I guess. The fourth point why you should consider getting a rat for your collection is that there are so many to choose from and so many tastes. This is the rat too. This is the current kind of flagship standard model that they do, but there's an older, version that people spend a lot more money online, which I'll come to in a second, but there are many other versions of the rat from Proco as well. You've got the Fat Rat, You Dirty Rat, the Turbo Rat and more, and there are so many other companies who make copies and boutique clones of this. And you know when every company from 20 euros to 200 euros makes their own version of a pedal like this that you're going to be getting something good. Now they all have their own different flavors and tastes, so if you can get the chance to go and try a few out and then you can pick the one that works the best for you, but if not, this is always a safe first choice to go far. To go far? To go for. Go for it and you'll go far. The fifth point why you absolutely need one of these is to not be like me, because of course I realized that I should have picked one of these up probably about 20 years ago when I was a very young boy in my adolescence and I could have made my parents even more angry with me than I did at the time. So don't wait. You might be pigeonholing this like I did in my head and think it's not for you. Give it a try. It can do way more than you would imagine. It's not all good though. There's a couple of downsides that I just noted down that I wanted to mention. The first one being that apparently older versions of the rat are better. So if you really want the best Proco rat that money can buy, you need to go back and look for one of the original versions made up to about 1988, I think. And that's all to do with the chip that's in there, which is apparently a little bit better than the current ones. I have nothing to compare it to, but I suspect I will be having more rats in my life soon, and I will be able to compare it for you here on the channel soon too. So that's one thing to mention. 
Another thing to mention is that everything good for me personally happens on the distortion knob between about 7.30 and about 10 o'clock there. Everything after that for me is just a different flavour of too much distortion fuzz for my personal tastes. I can see why it works for other stuff, but for me, I'm down here all the time. And what that also means is that it's very, very twitchy, the control. So you have to be very exacting in where exactly you're placing the knob. Moving it half a millimetre can change the sound so much. That gives you many, many options, of course, but it means that if you're looking for one specific sound and you want to set and forget, Make sure you mark it on there so you don't lose it in future. And that brings me to another point, the fact that the knobs on this bad boy are all black, basically. So when I was doing the testing, when I'm playing it, looking at it here, um, you, it kind of looks from the light there that it's got white bits on the ends of the knobs to show you where the settings are, but it doesn't really have it. It has it a little bit on the distortion one there, but on the other two, they're all black, they're hard to see, so I might consider putting different knobs on it in future. And I know that different companies who do this, and JHS, for example, who do the, the patch rack mod of this pedal, they put different knobs on it, presumably so you can actually see what you're doing 99% of the time. Finally, I would say that a downside of this is that for 77 euros, it's made some of my much more expensive boutique overdrive pedals sound a little bit tame. So I will have to go back and AB them against one another. Of course, this thing is just so full on when you play it. It could be that it lacks the subtleties of some of those overdrive pedals, but yeah, it does make other things seem a little bit weedy in comparison. Finally, I would have to say that although the Rat is incredibly cheap, I suspect that this will not be my last, not by a long shot. So it is gonna be forcing me to spend more money on pedals like this in the future. So in a way, that's a good thing. In a way, it's a downside, but they're addictive. I already know it. There's gonna be more videos. So maybe tell me what you wanna hear. If there are any other rap pedals that interest you, then write them down in the comments and I will have a look and see if I can pick up any to AB against this one and just do different tests. And what I also want to do is play different guitars into this pedal because I used my Epiphone Les Paul there running between the humbuckers and the coil split setting, but I'd love to use my telly for it as well, I'd love to use guitars with P90s, different humbuckers, that kind of stuff. So any wishes you have regarding rats and different setups to play them through, please write them in the comments down there. I'll read them and reply to everything and hopefully make some videos too. But that's it for today. I've been rich for rich words music. I'm very much enjoying making all these silly guitar-based videos for you, so there should be many more coming in future. But that's the end for this video. Bye for now, and we'll see you in the next video.